But we did want to talk today about, about internet safety and removing that fear factor. Um, my name is Linda Crill, as, as was introduced. I have my own company now. I worked at Microsoft for 13 years. Um, and I have spent a great deal of time uh, battling predatory behavior online. And, um, and with all of that, I am a huge, huge fan of the internet. And the opportunities and the power and the fun that the internet represents. And uh, I've been very disappointed in a, a lot of the hysteria that has come out. And so, um, as with the, uh, as with my colleagues here on the panel, we'd like to continue that conversation with you today. Maybe clarify things that um, that you have questions about, and we'll do our best as a as a panel to answer those questions and maybe provide a few more, you know, questions for you to walk away with to ponder further. Many believe that the biggest risk for kids on the internet are sexual predators, inappropriate material, and bullying or cyberbullying. That's not correct. The real risks for kids are not from predators or content, but as a result of their uh, a lacking of, of some understanding that they need. There's a failure to be able to consider in, that, in a balanced way to hurt from the, um, the Girl Scouts that Perry had on her, her panel at lunch to consider what they share and making appropriate decisions around that. There's a failure to understand and identify trustworthiness, trustworthiness in other people, trustworthiness in the products and services they use. That's everything from understanding the terms and conditions. Does the site require that they relinquish the rights to the content? Um, or does the site say, no, you wholly own your content and can do with it as you choose as an individual? <coughs> then there's a failure to understand predatory behavior in its broadest sense. And when I talk about predatory behavior, I really want to help expand that definition. Predatory behavior isn't just sexual predators. Predatory behavior is any aggressive or abusive action online. And that includes financial abuse, reputational abuse, uh, emotional abuse, or physical abuse in any of these forms. And so when we talk about crime online, when we talk about predators, it needs to be in a very very balanced way just looking across the whole spectrum and then looking to say reasonably what are the things we safeguard against. The philosophy that the American Library Association has promoted uh, is, in my opinion, just a fantastic one. It is education and not prohibition that is key to safe use of the internet. Students have to learn to cooperate online because network use and all the human action it enables are basic tools of the new globally interconnected world of business, education, and citizenship. They forgot to mention fun, but I figured that's because it was a library association. I was asked to tell you just a little bit about the K through five curriculum that that um, my company is developing. Uh, it is being sponsored by corporations. It will be free, without no no strings attached, free for anyone at any time. Microsoft has been the founding sponsor of that work. Any of you who um, are interested in helping in that initiative, feel free to contact me. Um, but that curriculum is based on a few key things. And I put um, materials in the back that people can grab. All the lesson materials are available online and they are kept up to date constantly. And they are for anyone. In fact, we want them to be for everyone. There's teacher lesson plans with videos to help them understand each lesson before they give it. It's very lightweight. Uh, there are student resources. There are hands-on interactive tools to actually learn the skills because education is more than awareness. Education actually requires some skills. We can make them practice math skills because they need to practice those skills. The same thing is true online. There are some very core skills that they need to learn. And they're not unfun. And kids are heavily motivated to learn. Not if you're cramming it down in a group. But I realized, I did count in November, the end of November, and I realized that last calendar year, by November, I had actually spoken to 20,000 students in junior high and high school age. I didn't take time to count how many in elementary school. 
20,000 students. And I'll tell you what happens when you walk into a, you know, a, a group. Sometimes it's 60 students, sometimes it's 1,000 at a time. But they all look like this. <laughs> Some fat old lady is going to talk to us about internet safety. <clears throat> and the hurdle is overcoming that sense of First, she doesn't know what she's talking about. And fortunately, after as many years at Microsoft and all, I can outgeek any one of them. Um, so I get the street cred pretty quick on that. But also, it's not lecturing. As soon as they recognize that it's their own self-interest, there is no kid that wants to be disrespected, scammed, freaked.